whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. If I'm a gangbanger, I'm transgressing the law. Therefore, I'm a sinner. Read that again. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. If I'm an adulterer, I'm... What are you doing for God? What does God require of you? That you fear him and keep his commandments. But well, whose commandments are you keeping? You're keeping the white man's commandments. Because he told you the law, statutes, and commandments are done away with. That's not what the Bible said. God said, do this or die. Follow my commandments or die. But you don't see nothing wrong with being a slave, do you, bro? Where are we at right now? Are we in our homeland or in somebody else's homeland? Where are we right now? Are we free or enslaved? But you think we're free. We run around on the Sabbath day looking for balloons and playtime for our children. You would think we're free because we could walk up and down the street and smoke weed and crack in front of the open, out in the open. You think we're free. What you got? Deuteronomy 28 and I'm 37. Deuteronomy chapter 28. In verse 37, and thou shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. The Bible said you would become an astonishment, meaning you would be amazing beyond belief. Because when the white man drives down here on the street and he stops at a corner filled with Negroes, he locks his doors. Because you're an amazing sight. He always look at you to be the one to, to attack him, rob him, rape him. When in reality, he's the robber and raper, but nevertheless, you are a robber and a raper of your own community. You will become a proverb and a byword. Byword meaning a derogatory name. What is the so-called black man called today that's derogatory, young man? Against me. Something so small as you saying, I don't want to be on the camera. When did you say something to the white man for calling you a nigga and outside your name? The Bible said you would be called a nigga. Why? Because you violate the law, statutes, and commandments. You're caught outside of your nationality. Do anybody right here know what their nationality is? Asiatic black. You're an Asiatic black man. What does that mean? African. Asia and Africa is not the same. Why? Because it's called Asian. African American. Because see, that's how destroyed we are as a people. That's us as a whole. Because the white man named you after two white men. You're not an African, nor are you an American. I ain't say that. He said that, bro. He said that. You said you're an Asiatic black man. What does that mean, though? You're from Africa, but you're an Asiatic black man. I don't see Africa in neither one of those words. See, you're not an African. You were told that you were an African. Who told you you were an African? You think just because we got off the cargo slave ships from by way of Africa and came to America that we are actually African. The Bible said that would happen. Christ said that. Give me Luke 9, uh, 21 and 20. Christ told us we're going to have to flee when Jerusalem is compassed with arms. Where did we flee to? We flee from Jerusalem to Africa. Read Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. Listen up. So-called black, Latino, and Native American, this, this, this knowledge that's being given, being spoken, is by the Most High God. Read. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. This is Christ speaking. Prior to our flee into Africa, we were in Jerusalem at this time. And he's telling us, when you see Jerusalem can pass with armies, know that the desolation thereof is near. Read. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Flee to the mountains. Give me that. What is that, Matthew 2 and 15? 2 and 30? Flee, flee to the mountains. He's telling us to flee the same place his mother and father had to take him when he was on the run from Herod. When Herod was seeking his life, where did he go? Where, where was Christ taken to by Joseph and Mary? Egypt. Taken to the land of Ham, into Africa. Read, you got it? Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. And when they were departed 
Behold, the angel of the Lord Hold appeared. Hold on, bro. Let us explain the Asiatic black man that you're not that. You are an Israelite. The Israelite angel of the Israelite. Lord I'm appeared to Joseph in a dream. Why won't you stop and listen? Israelite you, 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 Judah, you, you, as, as old as you are, you've been indoctrinated with the white man's philosophy that long. You should give us five minutes. That's Read. right. Say, arise, and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. The same thing that Joseph and Mary had to do when it came to Christ, they had to go into the land of Ham, into, the, into Africa. That's the same place that we had to go, into Africa. But we're not Africans. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. And, for, and when our de the destruction came from the Roman Empire, we had to run into Africa. And by way of Africa is how we yeah, got to America. Stuff. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein to. So basically put, Christ is saying, if you're in Jerusalem, get the heck out. If you're on a journey outside of Jerusalem and you see the smoke coming up, don't enter back in it. Read. For these be the days of vengeance. What is the days of vengeance? What are the days of vengeance? It's the vengefulness that the, the wrath of God was going to place on us concerning Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to prove that, read. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. When Christ is saying when all things are written, written weird because the book of Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John was not written at the time. It's written afterwards. So when he says as it is written, written weird in the Old Testament, because everybody loved to say, oh, that's the Old Testament, because the white man taught them that. The laws is done away with, yet we still can't kill, can we? Can we rape, rob, and murder? Go do that to the same people that told you that the law, statutes, and commandments are done away with, and see what it gets you, read. Right. But woe unto them that are with child. Woe unto them that are with child. Woe means destruction. Why is he stipulating the women who are with child? There's a reason why, read. And to them that give suck in those days. Let's, let's, let's see what Christ is talking about. Deuteronomy 28 and 51. Why is Christ stipulating those who are with child and give suck in those days? Concerning the, the days of vengeance, read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 52. And he, and he shall besiege thee and all thy gates. That same he is the same person or he or same people that Christ is speaking about when he says about when Jerusalem is compassed with armies. It's referring to the white man coming to take us out. Read. Until thy high and fence walls come down. Because at this time we ain't have no high and fence walls. This is a future prophecy. Read. Wherein thou tr trustest. Because we always trust in lies. That's what it's saying. We trust in these high walls. It's a lie, it's a figment of our imagination because those walls, those same walls that we trusted in, is gonna get destroyed anyway. Throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee Here and thy go. gates. Here it go again, that he, is it one person? Now that word, he might be singular, but it's not talking about a one person, it's talking about a race of people. Read. Throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, and thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body, the flesh of thy son. This is why Christ is stipulating woe unto them that are with child and who give suck in those days because of the days of vengeance. One of the days of vengeance would be a curse that we would be forced to eat our own children. Why? Because of our sins. Read. And of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee in the sea and in the straightness wherewith Thine enemy shall distress thee. Distress thee, that's the key word. Back to Luke 21 and where you left off. That's a key word. That's distress when we're forced to eat our children. Why? Because of famine. There was no food, there was no water. We were at war. We were at war. But who were we at war with? These same people spoken about in the New Testament. Same people, it's never left. Read. Luke chapter 21 and verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child. Because you're gonna be forced to eat those children. Everybody that Christ is talking to at that time, one way or the other, they knew the scriptures. 
It's today we don't know what the scriptures is talking about because we've been removed from our heritage. But these people at that time knew they were Jews. They knew they were uh, of the tribe of Levi. They knew they were of the tribe of Benjamin. They, some of them knew what tribe they were from, whether it was Issachar or, or Ephraim or whatever. They knew who they were and they knew the scriptures. So when Christ is saying this, everybody knows what, what, what he's talking about, read. And to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be a great distress. Great distress is the same thing that Moses was talking about in the beginning of the days of vengeance. There would be great distress. You're gonna have, you're gonna be forced to eat your children, read. In the land and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. So when that war occurs, a lot of you are gonna fall by the edge of the sword, read. And shall be led away captive. But those of you that remain alive is gonna be led away captive, slaves. Into all nations. Into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down. Now remember, this is, this is the future prophecy. Jerusalem will be trodden down, read. Of the Gentiles. By the Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So when we look at the land man is called Jerusalem or Israel right now, who is in that land? They're not our people because our people, according to the Bible, are going into slavery and be led away captive into all the land. Exactly. So the Bible said those who are in Jerusalem would trot it down until their time is fulfilled. So you have two nations that's fighting over this land right now. The, so the Israelis, which they don't call themselves Israelites. They know who they are. They don't call themselves Jews. They know who they are. They call themselves Israeli and Jewish. The I-S-H means pertain to. It was pre-dained. You never lie. It was pre-dained. Where was it pre-dained? In the book of the day, in Deuteronomy 28, concerning our curses. Are you done with it? Back, I'll go finish. Okay, I'm sorry. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Like you said, it was pre-ordained for us to go into slavery. But why do we go into slavery? Because we don't You're right. We don't understand. But it's coming a time where people are given the knowledge and the understanding. And it's those people's job to cause everybody else to understand. You got it? Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. So they read in the book, in the law. What is the book of the law? It's this Bible. Of God distinctly and gave the sense. The job of the prophets of the Most High God is to get in this book, learn this book, and give the sense to our people because they don't understand. You don't understand the word of God. You don't understand that about this. You're not going to, because why? God's people is not destined all the things happen to us and we try to make mistakes. What should we do when we know it? That's not all. I mean, you had many so-called Blacks, Latino, and Native Americans combined into an organization. But what happened to the organization? They all failed. They have no understanding. They have no understanding of what, though? Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent. Repent. That's, this is what you must understand. You have to know what sin is first and foremost in order to repent. What is sin? Transgression of the law. Transgression of the law. He got it. That's what sin is. You see, but we're in the New Testament, right? If the laws are done away with, why is the New Testament still speaking about the law? Mm -hmm. Because it's already every day. No, the easiest thing for the, the, the most important thing for the devil to do would be what? Like if his job is to hurt us, get you away from God, yeah. wouldn't he tell you the laws are done away with? That is true. He would tell you the laws are done away with so you can walk around and sin. But the Bible tells you sin is the breaking of the law. He said it. Christ said, Repent of your sins, but in order to repent, you have to know what sin is. You have to know where you're in. Like, like, I'm gonna give you an example. 
Ask forgiveness of what though? I'm gonna give you an example. Say you come home one day and your wife is just mad at you. Now, you don't really know what you did. So in order for you to apologize to her, you gotta say, baby, what's wrong? What, what happened? What, what's going on? Why did Because you don't know what's going on. She's the only one who knows what's going on. But it's like that, it's the same example. The Bible knows what sin is. Most of our people don't know what sin is. They don't understand. In order to repent of your sin, you have to know what they don't understand. They don't understand. Now let's let's give you some understanding of what sin is. Re re sin. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. From, from the moment we read this, you should understand what sin is. There should never be a time where you say you don't understand, right? It's the same thing with our people. They should never have a time if they're in earshot to hear this. <laughs> they should never be able to say, I don't understand. Read. Whosoever committeth sin. The topic of discussion is sin. Transgresseth also the law. The word transgress means to break. So we're in the New Testament. This is in what book? What chapter and what verse? First John chapter 3 and verse 4. We're in the New Testament because a lot of people like to say, oh, that was the Old Testament. But the New Testament is still talking about the law because the disciples knew what law was done away with and what law is still in effect. The only law that was done away with is the law of sacrifice. sacrifice. We don't sacrifice animals anymore, but we still keep the laws. Read. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law for sin for sin is the transgression of the law the bible defines what sin is it's the transgression of the law what is sin read that again whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law what is sin this means breaking the law Breaking the law. What are the laws? That is the reason Christ came to earth. What? Christ came to earth because God knew that men could not live by the law. Let's see what they say. Well, no, you won't. God said. John chapter 14. Because the only person right now that's the Lord and Savior is Christ, right? Right. Because I'm not the Lord and Savior. Nobody out here is the Lord and Savior, right? For our sins. Let's see. To be John chapter 14 and verse 15. Oh, I know exactly if he what love me. Listen, if you love me, meaning Christ, I know what bruh, bruh, let the Bible speak. No, you don't. Read it. Yes, I do. If he love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, if Christ is saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. What right. commandments? Commandment. What commandments? The law of the commandments. Christ came to came down here on earth to be God in the flesh. You didn't answer the God, question. No, whoa, whoa. whoa. God, you did and, not answer and, the question. And are you making a statement or we need the answer first? What are No, you the don't need the answer. answer you the need question, no, answer the question. No, no, That's no. It. I don't need to answer the question because I know he has but something he, to go with the question. Excuse me, brother, while I talk. Oh, and yes. And Christ came here. For, and died on the cross that our sins may be forgiven. He came here to put us not under the law because man could not live by the law. He put us under grace. We are under grace. But he said, But those that believe in the law, those that believe in the law, are, and, and they're under the law, when you sin, you Romans, transgress yes, against the, the law. Bible. Romans that, that chapter you 6 and verse 1. This is the grace. transgress under the law that you are hey, breaking. Bro, can I ask you what's you grace? believe in the law. What's grace? But if you believe that Christ came to save us, what's grace? The scriptures say, grace when in multitude of words, their words is not sin. This is the problem. We bring out what sin is. No one deserve. wants to uh, get in accordance God, with God's word. Jesus Let's Christ see what grace is. Romans chapter word 6 and verse 1. I know what the word says. What I shall we say then? What shall we say the then? Word. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? No. What's grace? <laughs> Jesus forgive all I our sins. Ask your question now. Past, and then we can go. and future. What is grace? past, present, future? The answer question. Christ? Well, I don't give a dog on the answer. That's what the question. devil would do this all the time. The white man taught you this your whole life, way way and way way you didn't read the Bible. Just tell me, read what God said. Why God man forbid. Not God forbid. Why man you don't continue in sin so that grace will abound. Because you listened to your damn slave master for so long, and you never once rebelled from him. And a good Christian would not use that type of language. Who told him from him? And a good Christian 
would not use that type of language. Who told you from and them? And good Christians would not use that type of language. Who told you that? Damn lying Christian. A good Christian, huh? That's what a good Christian would tell you the truth. 